Great. Uh, welcome to Tesla AI Day 2022. We've got some really exciting things to show you. Um, I think you'll be pretty impressed. Uh, I do want to set some expectations with respect to uh, our Optimus robot. Um, as, as you know, last year it was just a person in a robot suit. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we've, now, we've come a long way, and it's, uh, I think we've, you know, compared to that, it's going to be very impressive. Uh, and. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the advancements in AI for full self-driving, uh, as well as how they apply to, uh, more generally, to real-world AI problems like a humanoid robot and, and uh, even going beyond that. Um, I think there's some potential that what we're doing here at, at Tesla could uh, make a meaningful contribution to uh, AGI. Um, and, um, and I think actually Tesla's a good entity to do it from a governance standpoint, because we're a publicly traded company with, with one class of, sh of, of stock, and that means that the, the public controls Tesla, and I think that's actually a good thing. Um, so if I, if I go crazy, you can fire me. This is important. <laughs> Maybe I've gone crazy. I don't know. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to talk a lot about um, our progress in AI, in autopilot, as well as the progress uh, in, uh, with, with Dojo. And then uh, we're going to bring the team out and uh, do a long Q&A. So you can ask tough questions, um, whatever you'd like, uh, existential questions, technical questions. Uh, but we're, we want to have uh, uh, as much time for Q&A as possible. So uh, let's see, with that, OK. Um, so should we, should we bring up the bot? This is the, it's literally the first time the robot has operated without a tether was on stage tonight. So the robot can actually do a lot more than we just showed you. We just didn't want it to fall on its face. Uh, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll show you some videos now of the robot doing a bunch of other things. Um, yeah, which are less risky, um, yeah. Uh, just humble beginnings, but uh, you can see the autopilot neural networks running as is, just retrained for the bot uh, directly on that, on that new platform. When you, when you see a rendered view, that's, that's the robot, what's the, that's the world the robot sees. So it's, it's it very clearly identifying objects, that, like this is the object it should pick up, picking it up. Um, we use the same process as we did for Autopilot to collect data and train neural networks that we then deploy on the robot. Uh, that's an example that illustrates the upper body a little bit more. And Something that we'll really like, try to nail down in a few months, over the next few months, I would say, uh, to perfection. All right, so you've seen a couple robots today. Let's do a quick timeline recap. So last year, we unveiled the TeslaBot concept, but a concept doesn't get us very far. We knew we needed a real development and integration platform to get real life learnings as quickly as possible. But in parallel, we've also been designing the next generation, this one over here. So this guy is rooted in the, the foundation of sort of the vehicle design process. You know, we're leveraging all of those learnings that we already have. Obviously, there's a lot that's changed since last year, but there's a few things that are still the same, you'll notice. We still have this really detailed focus on the true human form. We think that matters for a few reasons. But it's fun, we spend a lot of time thinking about how amazing the human body is. But the robot, you know, its main function is to do real useful work. 
and it maybe doesn't necessarily need all of those degrees of freedom right away. So we've stripped it down to a minimum sort of 28 fundamental degrees of freedom, and then of course our hands in addition to that. So we're gonna minimize that idle power consumption, drop it as low as possible, and that way we can just flip a switch and immediately the robot turns into something that does useful work. So now that we have our sort of human-based research, and we have our first development platform, we have both research and execution to draw from for this design. So going on to sort of our brain, it's not in the head, but it's pretty close. Um, also in our torso, we have our central computer. So as you know, Tesla already ships full self-driving computers in every vehicle we produce. We want to leverage both the autopilot hardware and the software for the humanoid platform, but because it's different in requirements and in form factor, we're going to change a few things first. It's going to do everything that a human brain does, processing vision data, making split-second decisions based on multiple sensory inputs, and also communications. Another interesting problem to think about is, in indoor environments, mostly, how do you get the bot to navigate to its destination? Say, for instance, to find its nearest charging station. So we've been training um, more neural networks to identify high-frequency features, key points within the bot's camera streams, and track them across frames over time as the bot navigates through its, its environment. And we're using those points to get a, a better estimate of the bot's pose and trajectory within its environment as it's walking.